So to find the inverse tan of negative one, there's a couple things that we need to remember. First of all, we need to understand how do we get negative one for our tangent, right? Is that actually going to be a part of our unit circle? Because if it's a part of our unit circle, that's gonna help us out. We can just actually find the coordinates. If it's not a part of our unit circle, then what we'll have to do is find a triangle, right? So let's go and see if I can create a ratio with my tangent to find negative one. Well, if we remember our unit circle, <coughs> There's kind of three important angles that we've really worked with. So we have one half, radical three over two. Right? That's a horrible, ugly unit circle. But what I want to go through is these three points. So. Two things. Oh, that's one. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to remind you of our unit circle, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we have three points. All right. We have one half radical three over two, radical two over two, radical two over two, and radical three over two comma one half. Those are our three points that are our main ones on our unit circle. Remember, the tangent function is going to be your y coordinate over your x coordinate, right? So. Which one of these is going, let's forget about the negative one for a second, but which one of these, if I put my y coordinate over my x coordinate, is going to produce a one? I got it. That one. This coordinate, right? That one. All right, this one. And what is that, what is this angle in radians? Pi over four. So what we notice, and the reason why is because this is the y and the x are the same, so they're going to produce a one, right? Well, what they're asking for, they don't want to ask for what's positive one. They want to figure out where would it be negative. So the negative version of this would be down there, right? Where now my y value, not my x. Correct? Yeah. Or the negative version of your x value. <coughs> right? Those are your two possible values. Does everybody say that? Okay. Then, so we have the choices between these two points. Both of these points, my tangent represents a negative one. So what I want to do is I want to find, you know, what is going to be my inverse tangent. Hold on for a second. Um, so what I need to do is remember, remember guys, when we're trying to, when you were using the inverse, okay, what we want to do for that inverse is we want to make sure that it's within our restriction. Remember we talked about the inverse and we flipped our domain and range? So what we have is our inverse has, re has a restriction of only being between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, right? So we can kind of eliminate these points right now. So between these two points, what falls within our restriction? This point, right? And exactly what is this point down here? Negative pi over 4. Negative pi over 4. Now, one quick little mistake that a lot of students make is they say, oh, why can't it be 5 pi over 4? Well, 5 pi over 4, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be outside of our range. Yes. Right? It has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay? So therefore, negative pi over 4 is going to be our final answer. So my theta. For this angle, for this angle, it's going to be negative pi over four. All right. Yes. 